we were tight early, and uh, and so were they. Uh, and then all of a sudden they exploded. But uh, right now, just trying to get some things going on first down, so that we're not always in a second and long area situation. West Virginia's last possession, you had two quarterback sacks from your outside linebackers. Will you continue to do that? Well, I think we're going to come after them a little bit more. And uh, again, they're good. I mean, we just got really just got to be sound, Stan. That's a big thing. Okay, Mike. Thanks very much. All right, head coach Mike Godfrey of the Panthers. They trail 10-7. We're set for the second half kickoff. Back upstairs to Steve and Bob. Thank you very much, Stan. And let's take a look at our Apple computer student athlete of the beat of the week. He's David Tanzos. Tanzos, an economics and business major. Grade point average 3.99. That's caused by one A minus, and that was the highest grade that that particular player, David Tanzos, out of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, got. He's a junior. And of course, right now, it's West Virginia leading by three, 10-7. Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions exclusive live coverage of Great American Independent Football is brought to you by Rolling Rock Beer, same as it ever was. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? That was a very good interview, Tell Stan. That was good. He got some good stuff there. That was good, Stan. Welcome back to Pitt Stadium, and our score is West Virginia 10, Pittsburgh 7. You see Mike Gottfried scanning the sidelines now as West Virginia will kick off here in the second half. And I thought he said some interesting things. Throwing the ball on the early downs, first down. Trying to come up with enough yardage not to put themselves second and long as we look at some scores around the country. But most importantly, they got to just keep the ball away from West Virginia's offense and keep moving. And there's a big one. In the second quarter, Rutgers trying to bounce back, leading Penn State. Two teams who were involved in heartbreaking losses a year ago. Clemson 7-0 over Georgia Tech. They're in the first quarter of that football game. And right now, Brad Carroll getting set to kick off here for West Virginia. Brad Carroll kicking off instead of Charlie Bauman. Back deep now, Michael Hadley and Lee McRae, number six at the top of your screen. He's going back, and Hadley will take it two yards deep. He'll come out at the 20, cuts to the sideline, has some help, and finally is knocked out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Ron Weaver helps out 25-yard return on that situation. Let's take a look at how the two quarterbacks compare statistically here in the first half. You know, coming into this ball game, it was a game of two great quarterbacks, two talented athletes could run and pass. And when you see it there, Harris has not done much in the passing department. Dickerson surprises by throwing 12 times in the first half. They have really been a tailback team pit up to this point. 31 of those 48 yards by Harris through the air were caught by Reggie Rembert on that touchdown play. First and 10 pit at their own 24. Own setback is Walker. Back to throw Dickerson on first down. He laces a needle complete over the 32-yard line, complete to Henry Tootin, who's been very active today. And just as Mike Gottfried said, we want to throw the ball a little bit more on first down. They come out, drop back. Tootin comes from the right side of the screen and curls back, and he really puts the ball inside because there's good coverage here. He just makes a great play on the pass. Give that credit to Dickerson and to Tootin for concentrating on the ball. First and 10 now for Pittsburgh. Their own 36. Nobody in the backfield, and there may be a mix up as Bill Osborne looks over the formation and finds Darnell Dickerson bereft of anybody in back of him. I'm well, not sure as if uh, Mike Gottfried had that in his design. I'm sure not with 14:32 uh, left in the uh, third period to have to use one of his timeouts, but better than bust the play. There is number two, Reggie Williams, who was a starter last year at the wide receiver position. Tootin came on and really beat him out for that this year. But Williams can go catch the ball. He was the leading receiver on this ball club a year ago. See Gottfried sending Crossman out onto the field, and now he's calling the official over. So the controversy is over on the sideline. And they'll get back to playing here momentarily. But Pittsburgh, more importantly, has to burn a timeout early. Mike Gottfried said about this club, we're a young team. We have a lot of fun. We're very loose 
He says, yet there's a quiet confidence about him. There was a quiet confidence about him last week when they played Ohio State. He had a feeling they could win the game. They won big. Today, coming into the game, he was more concerned because he knew he was playing against a very experienced and talented West Virginia team, but he said his team was very loose and very relaxed coming into this ball game. And so, West Virginia out there on defense. Pittsburgh now with the ball. They'll be looking at a first and ten, and they've burned a timeout, and they're getting set to send their offense back out of the field. Don Nealon is talking things over with William McDonald. These two teams have fought pretty much as we had expected them to. Both are averaging 50 and 54 points, respectively, with West Virginia, that higher number coming into the game. But you knew with the skill level of these two defensive units that they weren't going to put anything of that order on this afternoon. Well, the coaches have gotten to know the officials well enough. Let's get back into the ball game. <laughs> Dave Tanzos, our Apple Computer Student Athlete of the Week, is back into the ball game now for Pitt. And we're just underway here in the second half. Back to action. As Darnell Dickerson brings him to the line, sends Tanzos into a wing to the right. Out of the eye, Crossman and Walker there. This is Walker on the pitch. Walker into the hole on the right side. Tackled by Mike Fox as he gets over the 35 down to the 38. That time Pitt came with an extra tight end, Tassos, who came in the game and played at wing back, so they had an unbalanced formation. They had an extra man to the right side of the, the formation, and they ran in that direction, just trying to mix up perhaps the alignment of the West Virginia defense. Well, we often forget the chess game that these coaches play against each other. That's part of it. Second down and eight out of the eye. Pittsburgh with the ball. Darnell Dickerson on the long count will keep it on the option. Tucks it up. Turnbull's got him once. Chris Parker is a man who finally puts him down as he sneaks up over the 40-yard line to the 42, a gain of about two. Coming into this game, they said they run a little bit of option. They did not run it very well this time because they stretched it out, and Darnell Dickerson really didn't threaten the corner, and Ronaldo Turnbull, 87, just played his position, stretched it out, did never gave him a chance to turn it inside or pitch it on the corner. He can't play it any better, and because of that, Pittsburgh's looking at a third and five. There he is, Turnbull. We've called his name a lot over the last couple of weeks. He's an outstanding athlete. Pitt is two for eight on third down conversions. Looking at third and five from their own 41. One lone setback, and Dickerson has the shovel pass ahead to his man, Ronald Redman. It's free, and it's going to be an incompleted forward pass, as we've seen once before this afternoon. Because there was so much pressure, the people coming in and penetrating, he never had a chance to get the shovel pass off. West Virginia just came after him on third and five and took the chance, and forcing him again to punt. Watch this. Watch the pressure right in his face, right here. That forced that, that he never had a chance. Excellent play by Parker, big number 94, who's covering the receiver. More drama again as Van Horn's into punt. He gets over a line, a low line drive that Bell will field at the 23. Up to the 30 and driven out of bounds at the 31 yard line. Again, not much of a return. No points for artistic quality on the kick, but I got the job done. 37 yard punt. 12.51 left to go in the third quarter of play. West Virginia 10 and Pittsburgh 7. Welcome back. Great American Independent Football back here once again. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of West Virginia University or the University of Pittsburgh is prohibited. West Virginia has the ball first and 10 at their own 31. And carrying the ball is A.B. Brown out over the 35-yard line. Tom Sims looks like Jerry Osavsky in on the stuff. We were waiting for them to come right after you. That's what they did against Maryland very effectively last week when they got behind. I wouldn't be a bit surprised that that's what they'll do in this half. Try to run the ball straight ahead, try to make some first downs, get their offense going, get away from looking for the big play. That's what they did against Maryland. They just put the two tight ends in there, and they just ran the ball up the field. Let's see what happens. Brown and Taylor. The setback spots now. On second down, and we've got flags all over the place. Carnell Smith jumps, but did did Smider draw him? Let's see who he did. Smider's been alternating with Milton Redwine at that right offensive tackle this afternoon. Smider's a big one. 
close to 300 pounds, 297, but he jumped. Can you hear me? And that's the kind of mistake they don't need. They had a good second down situation, second and three. Now they push the ball back at second down and eight. And to stay away from those obvious play call situations, the penalty puts West Virginia into one of those right now. That's their seventh penalty, 55 yards. Second and eight from the 33. Harris wants his man right over the middle, and that's his tight end, Keith Wynn, and he hits him for about a four-yard gain. Not much on a low pass. Riddick is there on the tackle. You know what happened here before? We had a delay a game because Pitt, as we look at the press box, that's the Pitt coaches, the assistants up there, they lost communication with the sideline because they lost their phones. The officials called timeout and went over and told West Virginia they couldn't use their phones. But that was all been rectified. Everybody's talking to everybody, and we're going on with the game. Third down for West Virginia. They've got it at their own 38-yard line. They lead 10-7. That's Taylor across the formation. Harris to throw. He's got Bell wide open at the 46. Alonzo Hampton covering and knocks him out of bounds. It's good for the first down for West Virginia. And Hampton gave him much too much room. Playing zone coverage, he gave number one Prentice Bell far too much room. As you see, Harris coming out on a sprint. Out. He really delivers the ball with authority, but watch how far back number three Hampton is. By the time he comes up on it, it's a first down. Much too much, much too soft by Hampton, the cornerback. Eight-yard gain for Grandis Bell, his first pass reception of the day. First and 10, West Virginia at their own 45. Split backs and Harris rolling to his left. Big rush on, gets away from one man. And it's tackled by Carnell Smith at the 33. Tom Sims put the original rush on. The play was made by Sims, the defensive tackle out of Detroit, Michigan, a transfer from Western Michigan. Watch number 89 come in. He makes the play here as Harris gets away from him. There is standing number 91, Carnell Smith, the outside linebacker, coming in from the backside. Sims, 6'4", 265, came to Pittsburgh from Western Michigan. Loss of 11 on the play, brings down second and 19. Rembert in motion to the bottom. Draw play straight ahead, big yardage for A.B. Brown, a clear zone to the end zone. He's going all the way. 65 yards downfield for a West Virginia score. On second and 19. Coaches dream about this kind of a call. You catch him, second and 19, figuring you're going to throw the football. They're going to come after you. There's some gaps in the offensive and defensive line. They found it. And watch, they run this play, and they run it to perfection. And, of course, it turns out to be a key touchdown. The Here transfer comes. from Pittsburgh, A.B. Anthony Brown. Here's Bauman for the kick and the point after. It is up, and it is good. And West Virginia leads 17-7. Let's see the play again. Here it is. They're coming after. The linebackers are blitzing to the outside. The tackles are pinching inside. A great job of blocking in the offensive line. And there it is. There's no safety to be found. Everybody's locked on somebody else. It's a perfect call. A.B. Brown. A.B. Brown for 65 yards and a score. And West Virginia moves out by 10. They lead it 17-7. We'll be back after this from your local stations. Steve Martin along with Bob Cassiola and Stan Saverin here at Pitt Stadium where the West Virginia Mountaineers have taken a 17-7 lead over the Pitt Panthers in this battle between two great American independents. Pittsburgh getting set to receive the kick of Brad Carroll who's handling the kickoff duties today instead of Charlie Bauman. That change on the special team for West Virginia, but the draw play uh, for A.B. Anthony Brown has him still buzzing. 64 yards downfield at the 10-23 mark in the third period. They give West Virginia their 10-point lead. Deep, McCray and Hadley now for Pittsburgh. Here's the kick. It's coming to Hadley at the four. Hadley over the 20. He's drilled and brought down by West Virginia's number 39, Kevin Burroughs. A 19-yard return on the play. 
Here we go with the replay of the touchdown by A.B. Brown. See number 43 right there, the, the third man in and on the screen in blue. He's the free safety. He's Troy Washington. He's blitzing. It's a safety blitz. And because he's blitzing, there's nobody in center field. And that's why A.B. Brown had a chance to go all the way on that play for a touchdown. Great camera work. First and 10 coming up for Pittsburgh. They're at their own 22-yard line. Dardell Dickerson's going to throw. Has some time looking over the middle for Tootin. Is it complete? Yes, at the 39-yard line. Willie Edwards covering on the play with Al Boyd Mays. And Pittsburgh continues to throw on the early downs. First and 10, they've really gone to the pass, particularly the drop-back pass as Darnell Dickerson sets up Tootin on the right of the screen. 81 is going to come in and break over the middle deep beyond the linebackers, and he makes a nice play there and another first down. Tootin has good moves. They're afraid of him going deep. They're giving him that shorter intermediate pass. 16-yard gain. Walker and Redmond, the setbacks now for Pitt. Osborne coming across a formation. And this is going to be Walker carrying people over the 40-yard line to the 43. Plenty of time, and Mike Gottfried wants to get first downs and move that football and get field position, come away with points. They only trail by 10. There's plenty of time left in the third period, well over nine and a half minutes. That was Redmond on the last carry. Jim Gray comes in to make the tackle. Mike Gottfried pacing the sidelines. Sees his team down by 10. Third year here at Pitt. 15, 9, and 1 is record. Had some great victories under him in just two years. Second down and six. And off Walker. Walker falls ahead of the 45. Tripped up there by Parker. Theron Ellis comes back to finish it off. Chris Parker, the senior defensive tackle from Whitehall, Pennsylvania, playing very tough. He's the leader of the defensive line for West Virginia. He penetrates that line of scrimmage. He, he's done a good job working against Ricketts and Matos, the big offensive tackles for Pitt. You see Theron Ellis and Chris Herring. Lonnie Brockman there trying to whip up the West Virginia end of the crowd. Big third down coming. West Virginia 17-7 over Pittsburgh. The Panthers right now looking at third and three. Dickerson to throw. Has a man open. Tootin complete at the 47-yard line. Good for the first down. Tootin that time again coming from the inside position. The ball was thrown low, but he, uh, he hung on to it. Got the first down. That's been the combination today. Dickerson and Tootin as you watch from behind in the end zone as he delivers the football here to Tootin. Good catch. Oh, he's down. been active today, Bob. Seven catches, 105 yards, and a touchdown. And they Barron, pulled him out. Looks like maybe he's got a little cramp in his leg. And they've got Baron Jackson in there at the wide receiver spot now, at the flanker spot for Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We'll talk about him. He's, an, he's a great prospect. That's him in motion right across the formation now on first down. Draw play, or delay actually, goes to Walker. We're over the 45 down to about the 43 yard line. Lots of people made the play, but the, the free safety, Daryl Whitmore, came up to make the hit to keep it from breaking. But it's awfully tough to run that delay action, that counter action against West Virginia. As you look at their defensive coordinator, Bob Shaw, Bob Shaw making the calls right there because uh, they are so quick. They react very well to the football. Good defensive ball club, and they've shown it here in the first couple of games. West Virginia, ninth in pass defense, 13th according to NCAA stats in total defense. 55,978 on the look at nearly capacity here at Pitt Stadium to see West Virginia and Pitt. Second down play. Dickerson carrying it like a loaf of bread out there at the 40 yard line and was brought down shy of the first down after a gain of three. This is, this is a counter option and he takes a chance. He, he just hesitates a little longer. Watch how he, he keeps this ball out. He decides to tuck it up inside. You ought to tuck that ball with him. His pitch man trailing the play was Ronald Redman, number 22, if he wanted him. But he kept the ball. It's third and three. We want to make first downs here. They're putting a couple of tight ends into the ball game. They've got Tootin out. Last time they did this, they came unbalanced. This time they go two tight ends, tight formation. Split to the top is Reggie Williams. Out of the eye. Third down. This is Redmond. 
Redmond over the 40, down to the 38-yard line, and he's got the first down. Good call, running up behind Mark Stepnoski, the right guard, and Roman Matus, the right tackle. Stepnoski, of course, is uh, All-American. Let's see the hole. Watch on the right side. The right guard makes the hit, makes the block. 77, pins his man on the ground. Stepnoski, we talked about him earlier. His coaches feel he's as fine an offensive lineman as there is in the country. Could be a high draft choice, an All-American, Outland, uh, Lombardi trophy possibility. And they are close enough to measure, so they're going to bring the chain gang out and take a look at just how close this is. He had assumed that uh, Walker had enough yardage for the first, or Redmond, rather. Let's see what it's going to be. They've got it. There you see the distance that they The one got. thing we haven't seen today, we haven't seen Darnell Dickerson take the ball and sprint on the corner. That's where he made his yardage against the highest state and in the opening game. He really hasn't done that. We may see that in the clutch situation because he's got the speed to get on the corner. It could be that they're concerned about getting outside the defensive or the outside linebackers for West Virginia because they've got great pursuit and speed. Redmond and Crossman are the backfield right now for Pittsburgh. First and 10 at the West Virginia 38. Here is the end around, and it's going to be a pass option by Osborne looking for his man. It was for Tootin, and he was interfered with by May. not the first time they've tried that play. Right, this is beautifully executed in a way. He gives the ball back here to Osborne, his split receiver. He pulls up. There's pressure right there from Turnbull, but he gets the ball off. He underthrows it. But as the receiver tries to come back, Alvoid Mays just wraps himself around it. It was an obvious call. It was a tough break. But it's a great opportunity for Pittsburgh. There it is. And there's Mays. He just runs into him. He, by the time he found the ball, he interfered with him. Ball is marked down to the 22-yard line. It's going to be a first down for Pittsburgh. That's not the first time that Bill Osborne has thrown that. Two years ago, he threw it for a touchdown to Vernon Kirk in this very same rivalry. This has been the most consistent drive we've seen Pitt on all day. They've mixed their plays with the passing and the running game inside. They've hit Tootin in the intermediate zone. They've got a chance here. A score will bring them right back, and this will make it an interesting second half. You saw the penalty statistic. That has really hurt West Virginia today, but they have the lead by 10. Here's Dickerson to throw. Scrambling. Has a man open. Osborne overthrows him. First down. They go to the pass again. That time the pressure forced Dickerson out of the pocket, and he does not throw as well on the run as he does from the pocket. And he just lofted that ball out of bounds. Good job by the defense of West Virginia, both in the line and in the secondary. And it's important now. Pittsburgh, of course, uh, trying to get back into this thing. They're just 10 points down, 539 left. You know, you look at time of possession, all the statistics point to Pittsburgh. But, of course, West Virginia has had the big plays, that 64-yard play uh, that went for the touchdown. Right now, Pitt trying to move this drive into its ninth play. It started at the 23-yard line. Dickerson scrambling, going for his life there, wanted to throw to Walker. He's put down by Turnbull. He was looking to, he was looking to come off and throw a screen back to Adam Walker, number 29. But the pressure by Turnbull makes the play. Watch this. See the fake to 29? He's going to come back to him. He's going to set up on a screen action. It's a bootleg, but there is Turnbull, the ever-present Ronaldo Turnbull, who has really put two games back-to-back -back that we've seen. He's outstanding. His speed, his size, he creates problems from a defensive outside linebacker position. Eight tackles against Maryland last week. He's had several major influences on this game. We look at third down. West Virginia leading Pitt by 10. Pitt looking at third down in West Virginia territory. Dickerson to throw. Flag on the play. Flurl to the flats complete to Crossman at the 18-yard line. But let's see what the flag is going to be as Mays made the stop. That time he just slipped the fullback. Crossman out into the flat. Got him underneath the coverage. Looks like Pitt was moving. But there could have been some movement before the play. It looks that way. And they're saying, no, we don't want to take it. Let's force him into a fourth down situation. And that means that Mike Godfrey's got to think about either going for it on fourth and ten or trying a field goal. Well, there's still plenty of time here in the third quarter. But it is taking them a while to make the decision. It's taking the officials a while to tell us what the decision is here. 
Motion penalty declined by West Virginia as William McDonald will come out of Illegal motion, offense declined. It is declined to bring fourth up fourth down. down, and Scott Kaplan is coming out to kick the field goal. Kaplan's boot will be his first ever in a field goal situation for Pittsburgh. And he'll kick it from the 25. It'll be a 35-yard field goal. Kaplan, just a freshman from Coral Springs, Florida. Van Horn, the regular kicker, one having a tough day and two having to handle the punts. Bill Osborne is the holder. There's the kick by the freshman. It is up and it is good. So Kaplan finds a way to start his career off with a 35-yard field goal kick to make it West Virginia 17 and uh. Pitt 10 with 5.04 left to go in the third quarter of this backyard brawl from Pittsburgh. West Virginia 17 to 10. Scott Kaplan, the field goal from 35 yards out. Let's look at it. And watch Scott Kaplan after he kicks this. Number nine, first time he tries, first time he kicks. Look at this action. The old cabbage patch movement here. You think he won the Sugar Bowl or something? His music video is due out soon. 5.04 left to go in the third quarter. And Kaplan's kick puts us at this juncture with West Virginia leading by a score of 17 to 10. Kaplan will get set to kick off once more. Eugene Napoleon is deep for West Virginia. Andre Johnson is there with him with A.B. Brown who's seeing some kickoff return duty today for West Virginia. Out of 55,000 plus stands and waits for this one to continue. There's the kick. A good one. By Kaplan. And taking it down in the end zone. Wisely, Eugene Napoleon. He wanted to run it out, but he's not going to get the opportunity. An injury report from the sideline. Stan Savard. Thank you, Steve. The carnage continues for the pit defense. Burt Grossman is not playing. Mark Spindler out for the rest of the game with a hip pointer. Now starting outside linebacker freshman Ricardo McDonald is out for the rest of the game. He's got a very bad ankle sprain. He's all wrapped up. He's through for the rest of the day. Steve. Thank you, Stan. That's a tough injury. With McDonald out, that means they're going to have to come with Prentice Wright, a sophomore at that uh, linebacker position. He's very aggressive, but he's not a big guy at 5'10", 205. We'll see how that develops. First and 10, West Virginia. Here's the pitch, and it's going to go to Brown. A.B. Brown out to the 23-yard line. Not much gain on the play. Tackled by Curtis Bray at that outside linebacker spot. Curtis Bray, the freshman out of Monroeville, Pennsylvania. Tremendous prospect right there, number 58, the top scholastic player in the country last year. They think he's got superstar quality, and he's got all the physical attributes at 6'4", 220. Nice day for A.B. Brown so far. 15 carries, 109 yards, and a touchdown. Playing against the school that he began his college career at. Here's Harris on second down, scrambling out over the 30-yard line to the 43. Driven out of bounds there by Washington at the 42-yard line. Nice gain on the play of 21 by Major Harris. And that was the option, and he elected. He saw the chance to turn it up inside. And when you think how he can run at 215 pounds, watch him avoid the tackle and turn it up here. Great athlete. Great acceleration. What a threat. Wow. West Virginia first and 10. Split twins to the bottom. Lined up otherwise in the eye. Here's Harris going away from the split. At the 45, at the 50, and into Pittsburgh territory, brought down by Olsavsky at the 47. And that's the problem. They're asking the linebacker to pick up on the quarterback there, and Olsavsky, as good as he is and as much as he hustles, he just doesn't have the speed to be there when Harris turns it upfield, and it's another first down. Oh, you're looking and now, excuse me, St Steve, now West Virginia's doing what they do best. They're getting the ball in the hands of their quarterback, and he's either optioning and keeping it himself or looking to pitch it. First and 10 in pit territory at the 47. Harris gives to the first man through the fullback, Craig Taylor. And Taylor carries bodies to the 40 down to the 39. And now with the injuries to the pit defense, particularly their defensive line with Spindler, Grossman, McDonald at linebacker, you're starting to see those big offensive people take control, and they can do it. We saw them dominate Maryland in the second half last week. 3.39 on the clock rolling Justin, in the third Justin. period. West Virginia leading 17 to 10, and they're moving, and moving quickly. Second down and three. 
Taylor gets the call again. Diving for the first down, he's going to be close. Riddick comes up from the free safety spot to make the stop, as well as Tom Sims. This is a key stretch for the Mountaineers. They came into this season. A lot of people expected a lot of them. They're a veteran team. And uh, this is a key drive, I'd have to think, for West Virginia. Well, we talked about who the game was most key to, and a key, of course, to both teams. But West Virginia has a lot to prove this season. They really feel they've got a ball club, and this is the big game for them this season. And measuring for the first down, it's going to be close. I think they're going to be shy. Major Harris's indication to his sideline is six inches or less. William McDonald brings the chain back to the center of the field. And that's where we'll start as Calvin Phillips heads to the sideline now for West Virginia. But the Mountaineers wearing them down team with a 17 to 10 lead right now. Let's take a look at a couple of scores from around the country. Duke bidding for their fourth straight win. 31 14 over Virginia. That's a surprise. Rutgers hanging on in the second quarter playing tough defense against Penn State. Some tough games this year. They upset Michigan State. They were a mild upset I guess with Vanderbilt beat them at home. Although I'd have to say those two teams evenly matched. Third down. Here's the call. Taylor straight ahead. Got it this time. No Ta need to measure. Taylor running up over his centers. Kevin Koken. Koken the senior from Youngstown. That's quite a quite a matchup. Koken is from Youngstown, Ohio, playing center. The middle linebacker for Pitt is Jerry Olsowski. He's from Youngstown. They went to different high schools, but uh, they knew each other. They played at about the same time as you see Olsowski. Let's look at Koken. And Koken gets a chance to meet Riddick and several other people as he goes out there on the block. Second down coming up. First and ten rather. Here's Harris. Harris in trouble. Throws it as he goes down. It's going to be incomplete. Very close. Very close. Was his knee on the ground? Whether they let that go as an incompleted pass. Curtis Bray gets in there and gives him all kinds of heat. That's a great job by the Pitt defense. They kept off a play fake. Major Harris coming up first and ten. Went with the pass. They contained him. Covered his receivers well and forced him to second and 10. As you saw, 5 for 11 on the afternoon. Second down and 10 coming up. Seventh play of the drive. West Virginia started this one on their own 20. Here's Brown. Brown trying to go up inside, and Allen throws him down along with Prentice Wright. Up over the 34-yard line. We Not much game. We talked about Prentice Wright coming in at that linebacker position for McDonald. He's not big, but he is ferocious, and he's a hitter. There he is, number seven. He made the hit that time on Brown, kept it to a yard gain, forcing Major Harris to a third and nine. They've got to keep it going. The ball sitting on the 33-yard line of Pittsburgh. 2.15 left to go on the third. West Virginia 17-10 over Pittsburgh. Calvin Phillips to the top of your screen. Rembert to the bottom. Rembert's going to go in motion. Oh. All kinds of movement. It looked like it was Canadian football there for a moment as Taylor was not set as All he went to the All kinds line. of problems as the, they had the wrong formation with Rembert. The tailback was in the wrong place. It's going to cost him. That's our ninth penalty of the afternoon. They've already, uh, yeah, that is their ninth penalty. You'd better off taking a timeout right there. Taylor came up. Of course, uh, Canadian football, you don't have to be set. To be in motion and the play can go. That's this important drive. They trail only by 10 points, Pittsburgh. If they can hold them here and get the football back. When West Virginia started to mount a really good offensive drive this time, very important to them. They're playing with a lot of new faces in there on defense because of injuries, Pittsburgh. And they're getting the effort out of Prentice Wright. Tom Sims at tackle. Jamie Lamont to the top of your screen. That's Taylor in motion on third down. Harris to the top side as well. Stops, pumps, fires to the sideline, out of bounds, incomplete. That was intended for Lamont, but he stretched it out too far. The pit defense put too much pressure, and by the time Major Harris wanted to get upfield, he had too much coverage. Watch this. He comes out, it's a sprint left. He has to pull the ball down because Osowski's in his face, and by the time he delivers it, it's too late. The coverage is there, the ball is out of bounds, and West Virginia, which what on a drive that looked very promising is now forced to punt the ball back. And Pittsburgh going with two deep backs as Carrion gets the kick away. Fair catch called for by Hampton 
And he catches it at the 10. A nice punt by Carrion. Who didn't have much punting room down there deep. And he gets Pittsburgh deep down in their own territory. It's West Virginia by seven. We'll be back after this from your local station. Welcome back to Pitt Stadium. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola. And there you see Larry Wonky. He is warming up backup quarterback for Pittsburgh. Darnell Dickerson, we understand, got poked in the eye. And uh, but he's back into the ball game. But Wonky is on reserve in case needed. Pitt at their own 10 yard line. After their defense held following the punt by Carrion of about 28 yards that pinned them in at the 10 yard line. Key defensive series, Bob, for the Pitt defense. They held on a drive that I feel they had to hold on. Yeah, there was every possibility for them to give up another score, which made it much more comfortable for West Virginia, but they held. West Virginia made some mistakes in penalties, and now they got the ball 90 yards away from the end zone, but they have the ball, and they're only 10, seven points down. Here's Dickerson to throw. Steps inside the rush and fires. It is incomplete. One at Osborne. Bo Orlando and Daryl Whitmore were covering on the play that time. Again, coming up on first down, even they have, even though they have the ball on their own 10-yard line, he's going to throw the football. He had plenty of time, but it didn't work. From ground level, we see the offensive line blocking for him. Because it's first down, you're usually going to get just a normal type defense, no rush, no penetration, maybe no blitz. Consequently, it gives the quarterback a chance to throw. As Mike Gottfried looks on, you saw the battle between Dan and Tom Ricketts. And Dale Jackson. Jackson coming back from an injury. Didn't play last week against Maryland. Having a hard time finding his way back in the lineup with Turnbull playing so well. Second down. Here's Dickerson. Hands off to Walker. Spins out of a tackle. Out over the 10 yard line to about the 12. Parker in on the stop now for West Virginia. As usual, it's important here that Pittsburgh not give up the ball. Hold on to it. Try and work for a first down. Get themselves a little better field position. Number 49, Herring calling the signals. Outstanding, dependable linebacker. But it's tough West Virginia defense. They really flow to the football. Really no weaknesses. They've got a lot of experience up and down the defensive line, linebackers as well as in the secondary. Pitt trailing by seven, looking at third down and nine. There are three for ten on third down conversions, and here's Dickerson throwing. It is complete to Osborne. Depends on the mark. Looks like he's going to have the first down very close to it at the 21-yard line. Great pass. He just turns back to the football. The ball is delivered low as he's done all day. Watch this. Two deep backs. They've got a linebacker out there supporting underneath. He takes the wide receiver. Osborne turns back inside in front of the free safety. That time Whitmore and makes the catch first down. And they convert the third to first on the 21 yard line. Winding down play in the third quarter with 21 seconds left. They may not get it off in time. 14 seconds and the clock rolling. Long count. This will be the last play of the third. Dickerson back to throw. Dickerson looking. Big rush on and they sack him in the backfield. That's Theron Ellis. Great play by Ellis. He just can't expect anybody to protect you that long. He sat in there. He waited. He wanted to go deep. He was looking upfield again for Osborne, who was covered by Darrell Whitmore, the free safety. Here you see it. He's looking for Osborne. Too long. And there it is. Theron Ellis from Norristown, Pennsylvania, makes the play. West Virginia 17 to 10. Back with more in the fourth quarter of this backyard brawl. Welcome back to Pitt Stadium. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola and Stan Saverin as we bring you the action of these two great American independents. West Virginia ranked 11th coming in. They lead the 15th ranked Pittsburgh 17 to 10. Fourth quarter coming in this 81st renewal. Very interesting football game. 17 10 the score. People expected a lot more as we look at Larry Wonky, the uh, sophomore quarterback from Cleveland, Ohio. He's played a lot of football here. Played in the Blue Bonnet Bowl last year when an injury came to Dickerson. He can throw the football. We may still see him later on in this fourth period. Right now it's Darnell Dickerson looking at second down and 22 after the sack. He's back to throw. Not much time. Has to scramble. Fires incomplete. Intended for looks like Baron Jackson downfield. Once again, the pressure on the quarterback, forcing him out of the pocket, and excellent coverage. 
in the secondary by Whitmore, Orlando, and Mays on the two wide receivers, Tootin and Osborne. Two three quarters of stats there, total yards. West Virginia now has surpassed, and their rushing yardage helped by that 64 yard rush by A.B. Brown, but they've been very, very consistent in their ground game here in the second. And half. you look at those stats defensively for West Virginia, that's impressive. They've really contained Pittsburgh, and they've done a nice job of holding Darnell Dickerson from really the big play. Plus, they've helped uh, Walker from getting a lot of yardage here today as well. Here's Dickerson on third down, steps up into the pocket and fires for Tootin, overthrows him. Well-thrown pass, Tootin was there, but he was covered he was double teamed that time, the free safety Whitmore. As he's looking for Tootin to go deep, here's Tootin isolated. But the cornerback 41 has him short, and you'll see the safety coming over in the middle. That's Preston Waters to double him on the backside. Here is it's Jeff Van Horn and more drama for Pittsburgh. He's kicked line drives galore, four punts, an average of 36 yards. Has not been able to get one up. Now he gets a fairly nice one out of there. Granis Bell at the 41. Bell heads for the sidelines and gets driven back from the 35-yard line. And it's a return of about six yards on the punt of 31. And a nice field position situation for the West Virginia Mountaineers. 14-39 left to go in the game. They lead Pittsburgh by seven. We'll be back after this word from your local stations. Steve Martin, Bob Cassiola, and Stan Saffron back at Pitt Stadium. It is 14.39 left to go in this fourth quarter. West Virginia has the ball in excellent field position at the Pittsburgh 35. Major Harris handing off to Undra Johnson in his first carry of the day. Undra, a good straight-ahead runner, gets inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Undra Johnson came in a lot earlier last week against Maryland and ran the ball very effectively. They really come with a lot of backs at you, West Virginia, and Undra at 5'9", 200, has the power to run inside, and also there he showed he can get outside. They really can come after you with depth in every position, particularly in their running back situation. He picked up six yards, got the ball inside the 35 to 30-yard line. Second down and four. Rico Tyler is the fullback. Here's Johnson again on the pitch. Cuts inside, has the first down, down to the 20. Lewis Riddick on the stop, but under Johnson, Mike Wallace, the running backs coach of West Virginia, tells me he will take the shortest distance that he can. He's a good straight-ahead runner. Excellent blocking up front, the whole right side of the line. It looked like a sweep to the right. Johnson looking to cut it back. He's a veteran. He knows where the sticks are. He knows he's got to get first downs. He's got another one. The ball's on the 20 yards away from a score here as West Virginia moves on the ground. Johnson's made 147 yards coming in, and this is Johnson again, headed for the end zone, touchdown! Andra Johnson from 20 yards out. The whole left side of the line blocked down and gave Johnson a chance to cut this thing all the way back. Nobody was there. Phillips, Stroya, Koken, great job on the left side of the line. And Undra Johnson makes it look easy. Don Nealon resting a little easier on that score as that gives the Mountaineers a 13-point lead pending Charlie Bauman's kick. Going to be his third point after touchdown of the day. Out of the hold of Chuck Levinas, it is good. 14.06 left to go. Let's look at that touchdown again. Here we go. It starts off to the right side. He follows his fullback up in there. But watch the cut. There's the blocks. Everybody got a block on the left side, and they cut back against the grain, and he knows how to find that end zone. Great effort by the offensive line, a group we've been talking about in the last two weeks because they're so impressive. Fourth touchdown, fifth touchdown of the year thus far for Andre Johnson. It's West Virginia by two touchdowns over Pittsburgh. There's the defense of Pitt sitting on the sidelines right now. They've given up a West Virginia touchdown. The Mountaineers have taken the lead by a score of 24 to 10. Brad Carroll getting set to kick off deep for Pittsburgh. It's going to be Lee McRae and also Michael Hadley. Story about McRae, thought he'd be in Seoul with the 4 by 100 relay team. Three-time NCAA champion. He's not going to get a chance to return this one. This is Hadley. Hadley breaks inside. 
35, make it out to about the 33-yard line. Tim Newsom in on the stop for West Virginia. Let's get out of the sidelines, get a thought from Stan Saverin on why Pitt has been so ineffective offensively. Steve, I talked to wide receiver Billy Osborne, number 12, and he said that West Virginia has not shown any different coverages that they have all year long. It's nothing that they have not seen on film. The standard cover two, cover three, some man-to-man. -man. Osborne says he recognizes the defense. He credits the West Virginia rush for destroying the, pa the timing on the patterns, and he credits that for the reason they're not being able to move the ball, but it is nothing that West Virginia has done differently so far. Here is Ron Redmond getting the call on first and ten, and he is immediately set down in a hurry by Theron Ellis, who's having himself one heck of a football game. When you look at... Uh this last scoring drive, they got good field position, West Virginia, through the punt, and in three plays, Undra Johnson carried it in from 20 yards out. In three plays, they went in with a score. But getting back to Stan's comments, that's exactly what's happened. They came into this football game knowing they had experience and depth. They're playing their kind of a game, and they're just relying on their talent, the athletic ability, and their experience, and they're moving to the football. They've done an excellent job up front with their down people, the linebackers in particularly, their experienced secondary. They moved a linebacker, or a fullback, and Frostman and put in an extra wide receiver on second down and seven. Dickerson back with time, looking over the middle for Osborne. He broke late. Incomplete. Lockwood covering him on the play. He broke late, and uh, Dickerson threw the ball up and really short-handed uh, short the football. It's, uh, it fell very short here. He's got plenty of time as he sits back in here, and he's looking for Osborne from the right of the screen to come open deep. But the ball is short. Look at all the white jerseys around the receiver. They're playing it well. They're looking for the pass. They know they can place in the secondary because they're up front people and their linebackers are controlling the line of scrimmage and the running game. Dickerson's come up empty on his last four passes. West Virginia now with wholesale substitutions. This is their pass rush defense on third and eight. And their nickelback, their fifth defensive back into the ball game. Here comes Dickerson, steps up, fires, intended for his fullback, Crossman, it's incomplete. And he took a hard hit after he delivered the ball. He took a hard hit from Pickett coming from the outside linebacker position. And they're going to force him to punt the ball again. That time his fullback was open, but when he got hit, he threw the he elevated the ball too far. What? Lots of pressure on that young man today, and it's come from the West Virginia defense. Let's watch West Virginia now. It's, we've got a new kicker. Yusef Washington is going to be the new punter now. Replacing Jeff Van Horn. Brannis Bell deep. Here's Washington with a boot. Bell calls for the fair catch at the 37-yard line. So West Virginia will get the football back comfortably in front with 12.54 left to go in the football game. 24-10 West Virginia over Pittsburgh. We're back after this from your local station. Welcome back to Pitt Stadium, and there you see Darnell Dickerson. Could this be the last that we've seen of him this afternoon? Could there be a change of command when Pitt gets the ball back? Well, Wonky's warm-up suggests that that might be the case, but right now the Pitt defense is out there on the field. They're banged up, and they're facing a West Virginia offense that has it all together. Here comes Johnson trying to turn the corner, and this time he has stopped. Holloway initially pulled him down, and he had help from Osowski. The West the uh West Virginia offense trying to run the ball, take some time off the clock now. Good play by Holloway, but you look at this, and there it is. There's the rushing game and the balance they have. We talked about it. Two tailbacks running the football, Brown and Johnson. Harris, of course, the quarterback, and Taylor, the fullback. When you look at that distribution, that's why they're so effective. Brown game that averages 313 normally, and against a pretty good pit defense, albeit injured, they've done well today. Second down and 15, draw play. And a flag thrown into the fray as Johnson goes up over the 30-yard line to about the 32. This could be a hole. we got to talk about the injuries to Pitt. They didn't expect that Grossman, of course, is a terrific loss as we watch the hold call here against West Virginia. Grossman, a defensive end, did not play today. They lost their young linebacker, but a good one in McDonald. And also Spindler. Mark Spindler went out with a hit pointer early. Uh, he did not come back in. And there's three starters out of their defense against a very, very effective offensive team with West Virginia. That's got to hurt him. Penalty apparently is going to be declined by Pitt. Force him into a third down, third down and 14. Taylor and Johnson are the setbacks for Major Harris. 
West Virginia leading 24 to 10, 11.58 left to go in the football game. Harris to throw. Rush on by Asowski and he gets it. Asowski and Curtis Bray in on the stop, the two linebackers coming in and making a sandwich of Major Harris. Osowski makes the play. There he is, number 55, senior out of Youngstown. The coach on the field. Watch this as Osowski comes around to the right side. You'll see him appear right there, number 55. He squeezes it. Bray comes up the middle. They take a gamble, put pressure on the quarterback, throw Harris for a loss, force West Virginia to punt. Lance Carrion with the kick. Alonzo Hampton getting away from it as it takes a Pittsburgh bounce and rolls out of bounds at the 36-yard line. And let's see who comes out into the ball game. It looks like it's going to be Larry Wonky. Number eight, Larry Wonky headed into the ball game. A much different look than Darnell Dickerson. He's a drop back passer, and he will throw the football here. He's come in, comes into this game. He's tried seven. He's completed four for 62 yards. He's had one interception, but he was outstanding this spring. Dickerson was not in the spring. He was the most valuable player in the spring. He played in the blue bonnet ball where he played outstandingly. So Larry Wonky is a fine passer, a fine quarterback. Out of the eye formation on first and 10. The first play is to Walker. Walker cuts up inside and gets nearly five yards. Stopped first by Whitmore. He falls to the 40-yard line after a four-yard gain. West Virginia's done an excellent job of containing Adam Walker today. He's had some great days so far this year, but their defense pursuing has done an excellent job against him. Kervin Richards comes into the ball game in place of Walker in the backfield, suggesting a throw on second down. Walker coming into this game at 327 yards, rushing 122 against Ohio State last week. Second down. Lone setback, this could be Wonky's first pass of the day. Wonky to throw. Has a man open, that's Osborne, it's nearly picked off, is it? Yes, it is, Bo Orlando. He got a foot down inbounds before he stepped out. A great play by Bo Orlando. We have talked about the athletic ability of this kid. He was a former free safety. He knows how to go to the football, and that's him. Watch him fly. This is quite a pass, but it's it's up in the air too long. It gives Orlando a chance to adjust. The cornerback is there on the receiver, and there comes Orlando inside out. Great interception. Oh, wow, what a play. Nice camera work, too, as you look at Orlando will return one for some 50 yards against Maryland for a score. And this time, this one gives West Virginia the possession at their own 40-yard line, first and 10 with 10 and a half left. Johnson gets the pitch. Straight ahead over the 40-yard line up to about the 43. Osowski and also Sims on the stop now for Pittsburgh. West Virginia looking to take some time off the clock now, up by two touchdowns, 24 to 10. They got Andre Johnson back in the ball game. He's fresh. He hasn't played until about the last series, so he's ready to go. They have another tailback beyond that they could use, and Eugene Napoleon. So it's going to be second down and seven. The 43 of West Virginia. Harris gives to Johnson. Johnson straight ahead over the 45-yard line out to the 48-yard line. Let's get down to the sidelines, and our reporter down there is Stan Saverin. Thank you, Steve. After West Virginia scored the touchdown to go ahead 24 to 10, several of the West Virginia players behind the bench were saying, let's rub it in, let's finish him off. And of all people, Bo Orlando stands up and said, wait a minute, there's a long way to go before this game is over. Remember what happened to us last year when we lost late? We got to keep going till the final gun. Sure enough, next series, Bo Orlando comes up with an interception. That's called senior leadership. Steve? Third down coming up now for West Virginia. The pitch to Johnson on the corner. Looks like he's going to be short. Lewis Riddick comes up to make the stop with Troy Washington. Big play for the defense that time. They held him on the option. He forced the quarterback, Harris, to pitch it. And number five, sophomore Lewis Riddick, who played fullback last year for Pitt, moved back to defense and starting at uh, strong safety. He made up and made the, made the hit. And they're forcing West Virginia to punt the football. And Carrion will do the honors. You've seen what he's done today. 43-yard average. He gets off a nice one. It'll go inside the 10, but it rolls into the end zone. Lance Carrion 
So it'll be West Virginia going back to defense and Pitt coming back out to the 20-yard line as you see Lance Carrion go to the sideline. Let's take a look around the map of college football on this busy Saturday afternoon. They're having a Donnybrook and Durham well, as Duke. Duke. Duke can score. They've got a great passing offense with Steve Spurrier, and they're making points, and they got well ahead of Virginia early, and now they're holding on 38-21. You know, they were picked for last in the ACC this year. Notre Dame, three touchdowns better than Purdue. There's that's, one. That's a big message sent by South Carolina. They said all week, we are supposed to be in the top ten, and we're going to prove it this week. Still second quarter, Rutgers 7-3 over Penn State. Our score, West Virginia 24, Pittsburgh 10, and this is going to be Kervin Richards who carries out over the 20-yard line of the 24. Kervin Richards, the freshman out of LaPorte, Texas, came into this ball game with a 6.5 rushing average and one touchdown has not been used today. He's back in the ball game. He's quick, 5'10", 190 pounds. There he is, another one of the outstanding freshmen that Mike Gottfried has recruited here at Pittsburgh. He was tackled by Theron Ellis. We need to give a call to this young man who's had a great ball game today out of Norristown, Pennsylvania. Inside linebacker, was an outside linebacker and converted to the inside and has done very well. Second down and about fifth, no, about five. Wonky, all kinds of pressure. Throws it to Kirk at the last second. Kirk up the sidelines, driven out of bounds at the 43 by Daryl Whitmore. Wow, what a play. <laughs> He's in the grasp of the defender, and he just flips the ball out to Kirk, who was a, not even an outlet. He was just sitting out here, and here he comes. He drops back. Watch the pressure from the outside from Pickett. Pickett comes in. He's in the grasp of Orlando, who's blitzing in the strong safety position, and that's, that's quick thinking and athletic ability. He just flipped it like an option to number 80, Vernon Kirk. And the uh, big guy from Denora, Pennsylvania, got the first down. 17-yard gain. Redmond and Crossman, the setbacks for Larry Wonky now at the 42. Wonky falls away from center. Here's Redmond trying the corner, but Orlando says, uh-uh. At the 42, he drives him out of bounds. We got a flag on the field. That was not intended to break outside. He wanted to go back inside with the play. He never got a chance to cut it. But again, Bo Orlando was there to make the hit. William McDonald, the referee, going to make the call. It's a hold against Pitt. Tough call against Pitt, but watch on the top of the screen. Watch 22, Orlando, come right up on the line of scrimmage. This guy loves, the, he really enjoys playing the game. Look at him, number 22, plays off the block of the wide receiver, Reggie Williams, not much of a block, and gets out there and makes the hit. But Orlando's everywhere. He's a Holy defensive Lord. back. He's Bring almost a linebacker. Yard, he can run, he can intercept. First He's really a terrific football player. And they enjoy it. Here's the latest on that Rutgers score. Rutgers leading Penn State 14 to 10. They're in the third at University Park. Rutgers has been able to move the football this year on people. Their problem has been stopping them, and especially last week against uh, Vanderbilt. But uh, they're playing tough up at State College, and that's not an easy place to play. First down and 20 to go. Redmond the lone setback. Wonky to throw with time. It's deflected. Looked like Scott Summits, I think, got a hand on it. Maybe premature with that call, but Summits has played a great game so far today. He may have got a hand on Larry Wonky's pass intended out in the flats for Boyer. Scott Summits came in. He got an award last week, as you mentioned. Watch this play. Wonky has time. He waits a little too long, and these big guys, Summits at 6'3", gets up in his face. There he is, right there. And he gets up, and he makes the play. That's a great effort. Played off the block. Summits was voted the defensive hustler last week against Maryland. That meant he led in tackles. He had eight of them, two sacks, and the senior really has come on in the last two weeks and is playing very well at the nose guard position. Second and 20 for Larry Wonky and the Pitt Panthers. And off to the fullback. That's going to be Kervin Richards. Richards trying the outside, and he can't get there either. And it is Pat Marlatt from Princeton, New Jersey, from West Virginia, who gets it. Marlatt comes in. He's the, the, the backup at that position for Parker, but he can move. There he is, big number 95. You can't do it any better than that. Say he's a very emotional player, very intense. And very big. 251, 65, but he can move. Third down coming up for Pitt. They're two touchdowns back, and the clock is running. 6.43 left to go in the football game. West Virginia, 
Redmond the lone setback for Wonky. West Virginia with their nickel package in defensively. Six defensive backs. Wonky to throw over the middle. It is complete to Reggie Williams. And he is brought down immediately at the 38-yard line, well shy of the first down. And the tackle is made on the play by Joe Oyuso. Williams did a good job. The ball was a little bit behind him. He caught it. Had he gotten up field a little bit, he had a chance to make more yardage. But it's the fourth down situation. Again, West Virginia's defense coming alive here in the second half and really has shut off Pitt to where... You know, they're just outstanding, and they're, it's hard for Pitt to move the football now, knowing they have to throw it, put it now, in the air. Nalen's looking to get a timeout here. Well, fourth down, and Pitt is going for it with 5.57 left, and now Don Nalen feels he's got a He's got the wrong people in the game, that's why. He's probably anticipating that they were going to punt the football, so he's got to get his substitutes changed around. So, there's timeout on the field, 5.47 left to go on the football game. It's West Virginia 24 and Pittsburgh 10. Welcome back, fourth quarter action. Steve Martin along with Bob Cassiola and Stan Saverin. We're at Pitt Stadium where the West Virginia Mountaineers have just called this place their home this afternoon, especially in the second half. They lead Pitt 24-10. They've taken over on defense in the second half, shut down the Pitt passing and running game. They've got them in a tough situation now, fourth and 14. It looks like Pitt is going to go for it, and uh, they're going to bring in. They brought in a nickel back. They've got an de extra defensive back into the game, and uh, they're just playing tough. David Lockwood, number 41, is the nickel back. They are fourth and 14 from their own 38-yard line. Williams in motion. Rushes on, Wonky's going to be buried. Ronaldo Turnbull on the tackle. Ronaldo Turnbull just ran around the block of Tom Ricketts. Tom Ricketts is regarded as one of the top offensive linemen in the country. And Turnbull, of course, he knows what's coming, just turns it on. Watch this from the right side of the screen, and he's right there. You'll see him appear, number 87. Big play after big play for this guy. As you watch, as that defensive line just tees off in the top of the screen, he just flies past Ricketts, and West Virginia's got the ball inside the 30-yard line. It's Taylor and Brown, the setbacks for Harris. First and 10 for West Virginia. They go to Craig Taylor, and Taylor carries people with him inside the 20 down to the 17-yard line. The ball pops loose, but it'll be West Virginia ball. Troy Washington on the cap, on the uh, tackle. Big offensive line just Blowing them out of there now. West Virginia sees it. They came into this ball game knowing that a lot of people in the country had their eyes focused on this football team. Ranked 11th coming in. This has got to help them if they can continue with this score. 5-12 and the clock running. Nine-yard gain by Taylor. Brings up second and one. Hand off this time to Brown. He's got the first down inside the 15 to the 13. Nice carry by A.B. Anthony Brown. Quite a homecoming for Brown, who actually hails out of New Jersey, but started his college career at Pittsburgh, transferred to West Virginia, and, of course, Major Harris playing in front of the whole crowd today as well. Eugene Napoleon, the other tailback. We haven't seen him yet. He works on his specialty teams. He started his career here at Pittsburgh also. Brown, 17 carries, 114 yards, and a score. This is Taylor. Taylor at the 10. Impressive running to the 6. Big block inside by Smiter, the right tackle, and Kovac, the right guard. But more importantly, that's just a little, they slip the ball to the fullback as the tailback, as the quarterback turns, as if he's going to pitch it to the tailback. The linebackers flow out of there with the tailback, and they just slip the ball to the fullback. And the kind of fullbacks that West Virginia has in Taylor and Evans, you give them a little seam, they're going to make yardage. Second down, three to go, ball on the seventh. Harris, first man through, Taylor, close to the first down. Down inside the three to the two-yard line, he's got it easily. They got all their seniors in there. They've got all their veterans up front and Coke in at center and Stroy at left guard. And they're going into the end zone where most of the West Virginia fans are. So they're getting a little home crowd treatment down there. And they're alive on that West Virginia bench, too. Clock rolling. Four minutes left, West Virginia moving the ball in. 
Harris to Taylor again. He gets to the one. Osavsky wraps him up at the one yard line, a gain of two. West Virginia can sense it right now. Don Nealon sending the play. Well, his play's Keep already sent in. No mistakes on the ground. Nothing fancy. There it is. Look at that shot. Great. Right Not on the ground go. level. You see how far they got to go. Watch this offense against the defense right in the trenches. Who will carry it this yard. It's Brown. Brown hit. Does he go in? Let's see if they mark him down. There's no call yet. No, no. He got really hit at the line of scrimmage. He got hit on the line of scrimmage. Good job by Cornell Holloway. The cornerback came up there and hit him just as he tried to jump and vault that line. Kept him short. And Mike Third. Godfrey knows. Can't get this football back. West Virginia's dominated the second half on him. Third down and less than a yard. 254 left to go in the ball game. West Virginia 24-10 over Pittsburgh, and they're threatening to put another one on the board. Harris with the call. Taylor's in. Touchdown. Linden, New Jersey, came in with 140 yards to his credit prior to this ball game, and the six foot, 250 pound senior. And look at Don Nealon. What do well, you think he's talking about? Well, what he's talking about, fellas, he said. He came in. He said earlier this morning, before this game, he was really up for this one. He was tight as a drum, but he had a lot of confidence in his club, and they played well. They have. They have played well on both sides of the football, particularly in the second half. Charlie Bauman with a kick. That's his fourth of the day, and it is good. And the West Virginia Mountaineers prove they are indeed for real. The 11th ranked Mountaineers take a 31 to 10 lead over the Pitt Panthers with 241 left to go in the ball game. We're back after this from your local station. And there you see the banner. This is the year held up by the West Virginia University fans, and this certainly looks like it is the year for Don Nealon and his staff. The Mountaineers have put a big win. Well, they've got a big lead right now, 31-10 over Pittsburgh with 2.41 left to go. A happy sideline, as you see. Their rushing game has gone for big yardage today. West Virginia going for 276 yards to pit 78. And look at this. South Carolina is beating Georgia 20-3. That may give West Virginia an opportunity to move up even further. They'll definitely break into the top 10 this week. They were 11th coming in. As we get set for the kick for Brad Carroll, Deep McCray and Hadley. There's the kick. It's a squibber. It'll be taken by an up back at the 36 yard line. And that's where it'll stop. Pittsburgh will get the ball back first and 10. There's Don Nalen, head coach, graduate of Bowling Green. He coached nine years as his alma mater, then went on to Michigan as an assistant coach, came to West Virginia nine years ago. He's got a, the winningest record in their history. He probably has the finest football team they've had in recent history. And this is the year. When you look at their schedule, after this, they've got Virginia Tech, East Carolina, Boston College, Penn State, Cincinnati, Rutgers, Syracuse. A lot of those games are at home. This game was pivotal for him. He knew it. They're going to win it, and they're going to be awfully tough to beat the rest of the way. Kervin Richards tries to turn the corner, but Chris Herring will have none of it. They'll have a flag on the play. It looks like a possibly a face mask penalty and you see the faithful from Morgantown what a crowd of West Virginia fans come up here for this game it's an annual affair for them as you look at the pit sideline not much happiness there that's a young club they're a young team they can rebound uh, Mike Godfrey said that they got a big game next week they go to Boston to play the BC Eagles so uh, they're a team and we'll be there to see them and you can bet that they're gonna be back they've got just too much talent the difference here today is that West Virginia's experience Pittsburgh is in the middle they've got good players and they've got they don't have the experience of this West Virginia team as we look at scores in the fourth quarter Virginia coming back against Duke first and ten for Pittsburgh after the penalty it's a face mask wonky hands off first man through that's Redmond Redmond going up over the 40 yard line and he's brought down at about the 39 of West Virginia so Mike Gottfried is content to keep it on the ground here. Rutgers leading Penn State still in the third at University Park. 
There's a big one. Clemson over Georgia Tech. That's close in the third period. Both lost heartbreakers last week. Michigan trying to rebound from two losses, playing Wake Forest. And they're up 14-3 at Michigan Stadium. That Army, Northwestern leads in the, at halftime, 7-3 over the Black Knights playing that wishbone. And Syracuse coming back after an off week, shutting out Virginia Tech. Here's Wonky to throw. Wonky looking upstairs as a man step for step. Looks like Boyer, and it is intercepted by Alvoid Mays at the one-yard line. His second interception of the day, his third in two weeks. Wonky was trying to hit Baron Jackson, that freshman speedster from Baton Rouge, and he just had great position all the way from Mays, number three. That's his third interception in two weeks. It was a beautifully thrown pass. It's just well covered by Mays, who's got position on 19. Jackson comes down with the football. Excellent job. Let's watch him again. Look at that. Right into his belly, and he was there with great coverage on a very, very quick receiver. As you saw, his second interception of the day. Major Harris out there. He's got West Virginia 99 yards away from the end zone, and they're just going to play it conservatively. Aaron Evans gets the call, and he gets up over the five-yard line out of about to about the six. 136 clock moving as you see the Richmond, Virginia junior get in there, come back into the huddle. West Virginia getting their touchdowns from Rembert, a 31-yard touchdown pass from Harris in the first quarter. Charlie Bauman added a field goal to make it 10 to nothing to end the first quarter of play. Second down and five. Harris hands off to the tailback. And that's going to be uh, Napoleon. Yeah. He's going to surge ahead of the nine-yard line. We knew we'd see Napoleon. He's an outstanding back. The trouble is he's got Andre Johnson and A.B. Brown in front of him. But uh, Roy Washington on the stop. Eugene Napoleon and look at this score in the third quarter Rutgers up now 21 10 in the third period third down and about a foot Pitt got their offense on the board as Henry Tootin hauled in a 22 yard pass from Dickerson and West Virginia scored again in the third 64 yard run by A.B. Brown as you see Napoleon again trying to get that first down and he's going to be stopped short of it at the 10 yard line with 29 seconds left to go the clock is still going Pitt has two timeouts remaining but they're not making any attempt to call one big big win for the West Virginia Mountaineers and especially to win it right here this is the last time they won in this series was here at Pitt Stadium as you see the clock wind down Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions executive producers Jimmy Rayburn Peter Lasser produced today's game. Our director today, Billy McCoy, as the clock winds down and the fans head to the exits. Our associate producer, Wendy Fisher, network coordinators, Tony Johnson and Dana Lambert. Jeff Jeffries has been our technical director today. And of course, the rest of a very fine crew is Don Nealon heads to the sidelines. He talks right there with John Fox, who is a defensive coordinator for Pittsburgh. And he heads into the tunnel. Mike Gottfried, a disappointing loss for the Pittsburgh club as Nealon heads to the tunnel, but they're a young team. Nealon waving to the fans as he heads underneath. A great day for West Virginia as they defeat Pittsburgh by a score of 31 to 10. Next week at high noon, it's Pittsburgh and Boston College from Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. We hope you'll join us on most of these stations at 12 noon. Our score today is West Virginia beating Pittsburgh by a score of 31 to 10. You've been watching Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions exclusive coverage of great American independent football. Our thanks to Stan Saverin for Bob Cassiola and our